Howdy, howdy everyone, Chris here and welcome back to Garage Noise. In today's episode, we're gonna finish up the repair on this Nissan Fender. Now, previously we straightened the metal in this fender, so it's all ready for some body filler. And I'm gonna share with you how to straighten this fender with body filler today. I'll give you all the tips and techniques that you need to know for your repair or restoration project. Time to get in the garage and make some noise. Okay, so first thing we need to remove this headlight. We've got the gap all looking good. Now let's go over to the bench and let's mix up some body filler. So we've got that fender all washed and ready for filler. This is the filler we're gonna be using today. This is the U-Pull Lightweight Gold. I really do like this filler. It works out really well. I'm gonna scoop a little bit out. This shouldn't take too much filler, but I'll try and do it in one coat, but we'll see. Nothing wrong with doing two coats of filler. Now this mixes up 2% by volume or 50 to one. So that's about enough right there. Okay, so the reason I wanna be at the car when we mix this up is we want the maximum amount of work time we can with our filler. I'm just gonna tape up the edge of this. I don't want a lot of filler around the edge of this fender because then we just have to clean it up. Now, when we mix up our filler, you want to fold it in. You want to avoid stirring it because that's going to introduce air into the filler. And if you introduce air to the filler, that's going to create air pockets and pinholes after you spread it out. So if you spread it out flat on the paddle, you're going to have more working time as well. That dissipates the heat and allows it to cure a little slower. So I want a controlled amount of filler, right? So the first coat, we're gonna press it into the panel. And I'm just gonna go with the contours of the body here. We wanna press it in so we get good adhesion, okay? And also press out any air that's in this filler. As I continually go over this and coat it, I'll ease up on the pressure to allow that filler to sit in those low spots. So on something like this, I'm gonna lay some filler on it and then I'm gonna spread it like this. And I'm kind of going with a body contour here so we have that nice body line can start forming. Oh, this is ready to be sanded now. It's cure enough. It's still a little bit tacky, but I'm gonna knock it down. I'm gonna quickly knock it down with a DA sander and some 80 grit sandpaper just to knock the roughness off, smooth it out a little bit. And then we'll share with you how to block it. And this is a quick way to shape that body filler before you wanna start blocking it, just to save you a little bit of time. So when you're using the DA though, you don't wanna hold it flat when you have contours. You wanna move with the contours just to knock it down. Now, obviously this is flat right here, so we'll sand that out, but then we'll have to roll it with the contours. But we're not gonna take off too much because we just wanna smooth it out a little bit. We knocked off the roughness just a little bit. And you can see, you see there's a little bit of a low spot there, but we're gonna start blocking this before we determine where the low spots are. Now I do see a high spot here. Now I was able to hold my DA flat on this section here, and there is a little bit of a high spot here. So we'll have to determine whether that needs to be knocked down. And it doesn't feel real out of whack. So uh, we'll probably, after we block this with 80, We'll put a skim coat of icing over this to kind of smooth out that transition. <clears throat> so I'm gonna get a block with some 80 grit on it and we'll block sand this out. So for this, I'm gonna use some 80. This is a Cubitron 2 sandpaper. And I'm gonna use this short block 
And although this is not a flexible block, I can block with the contours of this panel. Let's put some guide code on it so you can see what's going on. This is gonna show us any higher low areas we have, help us to determine if this is panel is straight or not. I'm not pressing really hard. I'm going in different directions. I don't want to create any flat spots. I'm probably gonna to have to switch over to a flexible block here. But it's still a little bit rough, so we wanna get it straightened out a little bit, and this will block a little bit better than a flexible. You don't wanna block out too much filler. You can uh, create a lot of problems if you just uh, fill it block out too much filler, then you gotta refill it, then you block out too much filler again, and then you never get it, end up getting it straight. So you wanna leave a certain amount of filler in there that you can let it do its job and then put another coat over top of it to fill the low areas. So now I have determined by feeling this and blocking it that this all feels good right here, but as I come down here, there's a little bit of a flat spot right here. So I know, and I've got a low here, a couple little low spots here, so I need another thin coat of filler right in this section here. Um, this feels pretty good. I'm gonna address this little high area here. I am gonna tap that down just a bit, but I'm gonna tape off this body line here so we can keep that body line shaped and we'll lay some filler right in this section here. And then we'll get that flexible block to block that down. I am gonna use body filler on this um, instead of the icing. The icing is gonna be a finish uh, a product for finished sanding. So I'm gonna fill this low area first down here. It's kind of a weird angle, so. I'm putting this over 80 grit scratches. 80 grit scratches is, is what you want for this filler to adhere properly. You wanna have it sanded with 80. in that flat spot so we can block it. There's a little bit of a low spot right here. So I'm going to fill that. One thin coat over this entire area right here. It. Now this is pretty much dry, but I'm just going to go ahead and I've got this flexible block here. I'm going to use some 80 grit on it. We're going to hold it against the panel and block it. I mean, this isn't perfectly dry, but it's okay. See, now I can cover a larger surface area and get that, con get that contour perfect. Now I'm not pressing really hard. I'm just letting the body, the uh, sandpaper do the work. Because if I press too hard, you can see this fender is kind of flexible. So if you press too hard, you're gonna 
you're going to get some flex in there that you don't really want. In order to get it straight, you don't want any flex. You don't want it to be flexing. So even distribution of pressure over this entire block, that's important, okay? Sometimes it's a little difficult to do, but the best you can, you want to distribute even pressure over it. Close to the point where we just want to stop. It feels pretty good. For this, I can use the regular block that I had. At all possible, you want to have a firm block. So if you can use a firm block, use a firm block. On those contours, you need a, you really need a flexible block. Some guy could on here. So this will cover larger surface area, allow us to see our low areas. See, I know that's a little high right in through here. See, I can tell there's a little low area there, so we want to block down to that if we can. See if we go through, right? Okay, now all we need, we've got a couple little low areas here, but we're gonna fill a couple little uh, chips here, air pockets, so we've got a couple little pinholes here. We'll fill those, just one coat of icing, and this will be ready to go. And we'll sand that with 180 grit sandpaper. So I've sanded this with 180. Now we're gonna apply our icing, and we'll fill those low areas, block this out, and be ready for some primer. Okay, we're mixing up some icing. This is uh, made by USC. It's a polyester glazing putty. Uh, really good for small scratches, imperfections. So it's gonna fill all these 180 grit scratches or any of these little 80 grit scratches that we might have missed. It's gonna fill these pinholes, this little low area. It's gonna remove any waves uh, in your repair. So it's really good stuff. It sands really easy. It's smooth and thin. I like to go over most all of my body work with a thin coat of this polyester glazing putty. Now there's other products you can use and you don't have to do this if you have your body, body work perfectly straight, there's no pinholes or anything and you feel comfortable with just primer, primering over it, then you can do that. Now, I don't recommend primering over anything coarser than a 320 grit scratch. A lot of guys will primer over 180 grit scratches, but I find that over time, that primer will shrink into those scratches and you'll be able to see that in your repair. So just what I've experienced, but there's a lot of different ways to repair these. This is the way I do it and the way I've had best results and over the years have had the best results and feel comfortable with doing it this way for my customers. So we've got that all folded in. It's all one uniform color. Um, I'm going to get a little bit on my spreader here and then I'm just going to go over this whole repair with a thin coat of this glazing putty. Make sure I'm pressing it in, filling all those imperfections and scratches. Most of this is going to get sanded off as well. But it's an important step to get enough filler in it. I don't like leaving a hard ridge over that. So what I'll do is leave this. Okay, that's where we'll leave it, right there. Okay, we're ready to block this out, get it ready for primer. We'll put some guide coat on here, show you what's going on. 
I've got a flexible block here so I can it'll move with the contours of the panel with some 180 grit sandpaper. This sand's really easy with 180. So we'll just block it in an X pattern here. Holding it flat against the panel. Block this. Okay, so we've got some U-Pole 2K primer here. This mixes up four to one to one. We got four parts primer, one part activator, one part reducer. It's a thinner primer, primer surfacer. We're gonna put two coats on this. We'll put one on, we'll let it flash off for 15 minutes and put another coat on, or 10 minutes. Um, we're gonna use the R500. Uh, low air pressure, we're gonna use about 20 PSI. Uh, two turns out on our volume and our fan pa pattern is going to be narrowed quite a bit. I'm not pulling the trigger all the way. I want to keep the overspray low. Next, we learn the steps to prepare this fender for paint. I'll talk about how I like to do a tight blend, and then I'll give you all the tips and techniques you need to get a glassy looking clear coat finish. That's all on the next episode, so make sure you're subscribed and you have your notifications turned on. Listen, if you want to learn how to paint right now, check out one of these videos. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.